Tonight, the 10-part documentary series, The Vietnam War, premieres on PBS. Joining us now, co-directors Ken Burns and Lynn Novick. Ken and Lynn, there's been a lot done on the Vietnam War, but what's so interesting about what you've done is tell the story of the North Vietnamese as well. So I want to play a compelling clip of an American soldier and a North Vietnamese and then talk to you about it after we watch it. Take a look. Every major contact I remember with the NVA was initiated by them ambushing us. They wouldn't hit us unless they outnumbered us. And we were fighting in their yard. They knew the ground, we didn't. They were just really good. Có một cái nhược điểm của Mỹ là có anh đi đâu là hút thuốc. The North Vietnamese carried Soviet-made, seemingly indestructible AK-47s. The Marines had to fight with newly issued M16 rifles that had for a time a potentially fatal design flaw. They needed constant cleaning and often jammed in the middle of firefights. Their rifles worked, ours didn't. The M16 was a piece of shit. You can't throw your bullets at the enemy and have them be effective. And that rifle malfunctioned on us repeatedly. Một người chết, một người lên kẹo. Vì người đi đầu một trung đàn rồi bị thương rồi bị 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 chết rồi ấy. thì người từ sau lên kẹo thì là như thế là bị ăn đàn nhiều. My hatred for them was pure. Pure. I hated them so much. And I was so scared of them. Boy, I was terrified of them. And the scareder I got, the more I hated them. tranh chấp sửa cái thương và cái tình cảm và cái cái, cái lòng căm thù nó cũng có sẽ đan xen tranh chấp nhưng mà cái lòng căm thù khi đã đánh nhau thì cái lòng căm thù phải diệt đội phương là chính cùng là việc quyết tâm diệt chúng tôi mà chúng tôi cũng việc quyết tâm mà diệt được cho nhiều định mình There's so much going on in there, Ken. The the interweaving of the North Vietnam. Was that always the plan? Yes. And you know, I think that when Americans talk about the Vietnam War, which we do a lot or uh, also ignore it, we tend to talk only about ourselves. But if we really want to understand it, ask the fundamental or try to answer the fundamental question, what happened? You've got to triangulate. You've got to know what's going on. And we have many battles in which you've got South Vietnamese soldiers and American advisors or, 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 or their counterparts and uh, Viet Cong or North Vietnamese. You have to get in there and understand what they're thinking. And the amazing thing in this film is just how similar our Marines and Army guys sound to the Viet Cong and the NVA. Well, I want to, Lynn, ask you about that similarity when you were doing the interviews. Was that what struck you when you were talking to both sides? You know, yes. Um, Sarah Botstein and I had the chance to go to Vietnam multiple times to do a lot of these interviews there with people who fought on the winning side. And we kept hearing the same echoes of things that American soldiers experienced. And there was a, just a, a willingness and openness to tell their story in a way that they never speak about it in Vietnam, which is the human story, what the war was really like. The war there is sort of this grand, um, sort of uh, victorious narrative without people in it. And the people who survived want the next generation to know how terrible it was, how difficult it was. And they're very interested in communicating with each other and with Americans at this point. So we were the beneficiaries of that openness. It was incredible. Any questions from one side to the other through your work? Yes, they were yeah. very interested to know, you know, what was it like for the Americans? Did they know where we were? We knew where they were, you know, um, sort of just what, what were the conditions that they fought in? There was a lot of back and forth. We would love to put them all in a room together. And we have in the film, as Ken was saying. All right, we're going to continue this conversation, but we need to take a quick break. So we'll take a break and we'll be back in our second half hour with much more from Ken Burns and Lynn Novick. Welcome back to Face the Nation. We continue our conversation with the Vietnam War filmmakers, Ken Burns and Lynn Novick. Ken, I want to 
go pick up on what Lynn was saying about the two sides in this. No, I think the reconciliation is possible within our two countries where we're both divided as well as between the two countries where we seem to have at least superficially solved the distance between us. And we had a North Vietnamese soldier that we interviewed who'd come actually to New Hampshire where we were editing and made some comments. We put him into the film and he had a chance recently when Lynn took the film back to Vietnam to look at it. And he said, you know, when I was in the army through the propaganda, I saw the demonstrations that were taking place against the war in the United States as a sign of our weakness as a country and their superiority because they had a kind of monolithic sense of morale and purpose. Um, but he said, I realize now that that was a sign of your strength, that he didn't have that luxury of being able to say, you know what, I disagree without ending up in a re-education camp or worse. And I think for us Americans who are still torn on the bias about Vietnam to realize that from the distance of our enemy, they can actually now appreciate uh, all of the things that were going on with us might help us all heal. Right. Lynn, let me ask you about the American presidency and this war. You so beautifully chart the many presidents of both parties yeah. who were a part of this. What, where, what was the state of the American presidency through the Vietnam War? Uh, we think that you can really see a sea change between when the war began or when the our American got involved in Vietnam, which is right after World War II, and that was the Truman administration, the Eisenhower administration, then Richard Johnson. Um, Kennedy, Johnson, and Nixon, that you know, there was a sense that we believed in our leaders, that they were uh, good people, that they knew what they were doing, that they were competent, that they would do what was in the best interest of the nation, that they would not lie to the people, that they would tell the truth, you know, and that they would sort of carry on the nation's business in the best possible way. And that just eroded and eroded and eroded. You had sort of a credibility gap where the public began to doubt that they were getting the true story under Johnson. And it, it sort of metastasized into terrible cynicism under Nixon that we cannot trust our presidents, that they don't tell us the truth, that they are not doing the right thing, and that, you know, just sort of a pox on both their houses. Right. And that's sort of where we are now. It's become sort of from naive idealist sort of faith to skepticism to cynicism. And that's a disturbing thing. And you hear this in the audio tapes that we were able to include in the film when you hear our president speaking privately, especially Johnson and Nixon, about what they really think about the war, which is they have terrible doubts, they have no confidence, they want to get out, they don't see the point, and they go out on television the next day and say everything's going great. Ken, this is, a, it's about a, a decision that becomes, in a sense, irrevocable right. and has its own momentum. It does. Give me your sense of that, and also as a filmmaker, how do you take those of us who weren't living in that moment Back to it, because now Vietnam, it just it, it connotes failure right. for people. Like, exactly. how did they not know this was going to be a disaster? How do you convey that to well, people? Well, you know what? It, good storytelling, someone once told me, is and then, and then, and then. <laughs> and so you just start at the beginning, and you ask certain questions of the Truman administration, and they're making decisions based on domestic political considerations, which is a polite way, you know, <laughs> of saying, will I get reelected? And Eisenhower, and Kennedy, and Johnson, and Nixon. What's interesting for, for us filmmakers, and maybe it's too much inside baseball, is that we're trying to sort of manage a combination of a bottom-up and a top-down way of communicating history. Or Ordinary, so-called ordinary folks at the granular level of combat, as you saw in that first clip. But then also we've got the president sort of supposedly top down 30,000 feet right. with our best interests. And here you're hearing in the intimacy of the tapes, particularly the Johnson and Nixon tapes, the exact opposite, not only of what they're saying, but it explodes this notion of the great men and returns them to the same very human level as everyone else we're dealing with. So you're perceiving this momentum that all of them know exactly that this is not going to work out, that, that as, you know, we have a strategy of not losing rather than winning or any articulation of particular goals that would represent winning. And then they're also saying one thing in public and another in private, but you can get at their, their, their humanity and their failures at the same time our ordinary witnesses are betraying the same sorts of complications. John Musgrave, you know, I hated them and I feared them at the same time. Right. Lynn, what was it like to have the Vietnam in your war in your head for this <laughs> length of time? <laughs> well, I think it's too for Ken and me and our writer Jeff Ward, our producer Sarah Botstein. We, none of us got a whole lot of sleep over the course of this. We sort of, it was a 24-7 um, obsession and it was devastating. I mean, it was devastating and it was deeply inspiring. It was devastating to think of the lives lost, American 58,000 lives, Vietnamese 3 million lives, 300,000 are still missing in Vietnam. So to try to absorb the, the meaning of that was totally devastating. Every time we go to the wall, we cry. Every time we think about what happened in Vietnam, we cry. And yet we were also 
just deeply moved and sort of inspired by the courage of the people who shared their stories with us. You know, that they sort of summoned the um, inner resources to speak about things that were deeply troubling and to see them living and breathing and, you know, able to function and tell us what happened to them. People who lost a son, people who lost a friend, people who were wounded horribly. Um, just they survived and here they are and that's incredible. How did they do that? I mean, were you, they're so calm in these descriptions. What, what you want to do is try to go in and listen. I mean, too often now in a kind of journalistic dynamic, you've got a set of questions. You're, you're, you're not, it isn't really listening because what we want to do is hear something in a tick of the voice or a twitch of a cheek mm -hmm. and don't have a, just a couple of minutes. We have you know, an hour or two hours right. to sit with them and to hear that that question number seven may in fact have a B, C, D, E, F, G thing and suddenly you're down a wormhole that we, and more importantly they, weren't completely sure they were going to go to and so there is nothing more satisfying professionally than to be witness to sort of express memory for the first time. And some of these people had stories, I won't say practiced ever, it's impossible in the Vietnam War to have this practice, but some of them, I think, surprised themselves by the way the moment the memory overtook them. And it's said that, you know, you fight wars twice, yeah. once on the battlefield and once in memory. And if you've got your camera there and you're sensitive to it, you can sometimes see the, the, the conflict, and it's not always between armies, it's within a particular person. And that's, that kind of growth and that kind of development is something you want to capture too and so many of the 79 people you meet on camera in the film undergo profound psychological and emotional changes as a result of this war and thankfully gratefully they were willing to share that transformation with us. Lynn what surprised you the most in the process? Well I, I was devastated to find the sense that our leadership never really had confidence that the war could be won from the very beginning and to think about all the lives lost and all the uh, terrible suffering that people went through both here and in Vietnam and and I, I think I didn't expect that I thought there would have been some moments along the way and I think understanding how deeply complicated the war still is in Vietnam you know they won the the, the, the Vietnamese government and the Vietnamese people that are on the winning side are now to this day reckoning with the losses they suffered and asking questions about what it means some of the same questions we ask and that surprised us we really didn't know that there would be this sense of was it worth it what price did we pay? Were our leaders doing the right thing? The same questions we ask, they're asking in Vietnam, and that, that was revelatory for sure. All right, we're gonna have to leave it there. Thank you both so very much. Mm -hmm. It's an amazing piece of work. And tonight, it will air on PBS at 8 p.m. Eastern, The Vietnam War, and we'll be right back.